as we behold the character of Christ, as we behold the love of Christ, as we behold the personality of Christ, we capture the picture of who he is. And then when we put that picture to us, we realize that there is a big disparity between him and us. And then we start becoming transformed because we are beholding him in truth and our hearts start changing. We start realizing that he actually does not want us to make it up to him because we cannot make it up to him. Now that gives me freedom to say, okay, for you loving me this much, I love you back. Hi, welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is such a pleasure to have you watch today's video. I am OM and I want to speak about repentance and transformation. Transformation equals continuous repentance. That is why scripture says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word alone means repentance. That is for you to understand that every time you sit under a message that makes you have a different perspective, that's repentance. I got repentance all wrong growing up because of the legalistic teachings that I had. And I thought repentance was about me turning my heart because it was like, make this U-turn in your heart, in your character. And I thought that I can just make that U-turn in my heart, in my attitude. That is why when I would fail, I would beat myself up for failing. I would feel bad and all of that. I would go for fasting so that God would forgive me. It's a lot, which I don't want to go into. I got repentance all wrong. First of all, this I will let you know. Repentance is a Greek word that means changing your mind. The Greek word is metanoia. It means change your mind. Repentance is not change your ways, your acts. When your mind changes, your life will change. Your ways will change. As a man thinks, so is he. So we are a product of our deeper thoughts. So scripture says that a good person out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good fruits. But if the treasure of my heart are not good, if my heart is not changed, if my mind is not changed, then any fruit I'm bringing just shows what is inside, which means the incapacitation that I had to be able to do good like Paul expressed in Romans chapter 7, the good that I want to do, I cannot. And the bad things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing it. It comes from the flesh. It comes from trying by your effort. So I realized that each time I try to not do wrong, I found myself doing it. And this is when I realized that I got repentance all wrong. I thought repentance was about making promises to God. I will never do this again. I will never do this again, God. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But then my mind hasn't changed. Why did I continue doing that? I would not even know why. And I will fall into the same thing again. Then I would make promises. Oh God, I will make it up to you. I will make it up to you. And I never knew that I would not be able to ever make it up to him because God does not even need me to make it up to him. I can never do it, make it up to him. And he doesn't need me to. But now I know that repentance is not a one-off thing. I've accepted Jesus into my life. So now I've repented. So my whole life is supposed to automatically change. No, that is not the Bible. Repentance is a continuous work. As you are beholding God, as we behold him, we are being transformed. We are being conformed to his image and being transformed in our hearts from glory to glory, from one level of glory to another level of glory. So it's in the beholding that is where we get changed. It's in the looking as we behold the character of Christ, as we behold the love of Christ, as we behold the personality of Christ, we capture the picture of who he is. And then when we put that picture to us, we realize that there is a big disparity between him and us. And then we start becoming transformed because we are beholding him in truth and our hearts start changing. We start realizing that he actually does not want us to make it up to him because we cannot make it up to him. Now that gives me freedom to say, okay, now for you loving me this much, I love you back. Again, repentance is not about a set of rules to keep so that you'll be accepted before God because you can never do anything to be accepted before God, but God has already made you accepted in Christ the beloved. Ephesians 1 verse 6 says that we are accepted in the beloved. So it is not about let me do this, do that, stay away from this, stay away from that so that God will accept me. My acceptance and validation is for the fact that Christ has died and gave himself for me and I have received salvation, I have been accepted in Christ once I received him. That is 
it. And then the work of continuous repentance will happen as I behold Christ, which is my mind changing. As scripture says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So when you come to realize that repentance is changing of the mind, you will not try to go by your efforts to do things to be accepted because you are already accepted. All you would focus is not to copy the world, but then to focus on Christ. Because as you behold him, his life comes alive in you your mind changes the next point is salvation is a gift and i don't deserve it scriptures in ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says god saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this it is a gift from god salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done so none of us can boast about it if i had the mindset that i need to get myself cleansed before i come to christ before i get saved before i will be saved I need to understand that this is a gift. This is not something that I can boast about. It is a gift of God's grace. I don't deserve it, but then I receive it because it is an undeserved favor. God decided to give me salvation, not of works, not of what I can do because I can't do anything to deserve it. Christ did all the work. That is why it's called the finished work. Coming to him puts me on a ground that now I do not have to be burdened by trying but i have to receive his love to be able to live a life that is worthy of him if you have not yet received this gift of god you need to know that you do not cleanse yourself before you take a bath but you take a bath to be cleansed so if someone told you that you need to go do one or two or three things for you to be saved then how why do you need to be saved if you can do something to become better, to be saved. You don't become better to be saved. You get saved to become better. It is you understanding that Jesus is the best. There's no other way to clean yourself before you can come to him. He wants you to come like you are, as dirty as you are. That's why when the prodigal son came back and as dirty as he was, the father was able to hug him just as he was. God doesn't want you to pretend to come to him. God doesn't want you to have this pretense of saying, oh, let me go check myself. Let me go cleanse myself out before I can come to God. Oh, let me go get my dogs in a row before I can come to God. That is not repentance. Repentance is coming to God like you are and beholding him so that you can be transformed. As I've said already, repentance is about changing your mind. If you had thought that you need to do something to be accepted, change your mind now. God has already accepted you in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1.6 says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. You are already accepted in the beloved Christ Jesus. When Jesus came to it, the scripture says that God looked at him before he would even do anything and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I accept him already. He hasn't done anything, but this is my son. So the fact that we are God's children through the finished work of Christ, we are already accepted because he has given us this gift of salvation. Repentance here means it's about me changing my mind. I came to this and it has blessed me and I'm sharing this hoping that if you are thought that God hasn't forgiven you because you've tried to beat yourself up to be forgiven by God and you don't feel it because you're trying to beat yourself so that you can feel the remorse that you've really done something wrong. You don't need to do that to yourself. You don't need to hurt yourself. God loves you as you are. God already loves you. You don't need to do something before God loves you. You don't need to do something before you are accepted. You don't need to do something before you are forgiven. God has already forgiven you through Christ. And that is why scripture says that either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. This is the scripture that leads to saying anyone that is in Christ Jesus is a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. You have to come to that realization that you are already loved. God already loves you. So once you receive his love, change your mind. You thought he didn't love you because you did not do things to deserve his love. Change your mind. He loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. You have to believe it. The Bible tells you so. You are accepted. You are valued. What are the lies that you've heard? And then 
you were told that you need to do something before you can approach God. You can come to him like you are. That's why Jesus said, come unto me. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. So, just to end with this, this scripture is not about need. It was about this religious burden of trying to please God and be pleasing to God. Jesus said, you have tried in your own strength, and you don't need to take on that burden of trying to deserve anything that God gives. Come to me. I am the birth. Come to me. I am your acceptance. Come to me. I'm the one to validate you. Come to me. I am your love and I will rest you. I will give you rest. You don't need to do any of those work, those burden you add, religious burden to keep the Ten Commandments. That's why Peter, when the Gentiles accepted Christ in the apostles' time in Acts, Peter had to tell them, so why are you now challenging God by burdening the Gentiles' believers with a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors were able to bear? We believe that we are all saved the same way by the undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus. The Jewish people were telling the Gentiles that came to Christ that they need to keep the law of Moses to be saved. And Peter said, no, we are all saved through the undeserved grace of our Lord Jesus, not by keeping the law. So I know I heard this. When I was growing up, that you need to keep the Ten Commandments for you to be saved. You don't need to. When you believe in Christ, you are not the one now living. You can say like Paul, the life that I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who died for me and gave himself for me. Because it's love will be what compels you to do things for him. Because when you love someone truly and know that you are loved by that person, you don't want to break their heart. You don't want to make them feel sad. You don't want to disappoint them. So because of their love for you, you actually want to make them proud. You love your parents. You want to make them proud. I'm not talking about all this fake love that people are sharing around here, but I hope you get the, the message and I hope that this message is a blessing to you. Let me know in the comments how this video is helpful to you. And don't forget to watch the next video. Bye-bye.